Hey, what's up everybody? Landon with LMR.com. Uh, we got a cool little video for you today. Uh, this is Trey's 2014 Mustang GT. We already have some baseline numbers uh, on this car. If you want to see that dyno run, it'll be available for you down in the description. Uh, Trey has purchased a one-piece aluminum drive shaft from Ford Performance as his car still has the factory two-piece drive shaft. So we're going to remove it from the car. We're going to weigh it. We're going to unbox the aluminum drive shaft from Ford Performance. We're going to weigh it, install it into his car, and then uh, we're going to hook it up to our dyno and see if we see enough noticeable increase in horsepower. We're not necessarily adding, I guess increasing would be the right word, more or less. We're freeing up horsepower and we want to see if that translates uh, to a chassis dyno. So let's get started. Curl this bad boy. Yeah, bike weight. You can see where they welded the, the two, the end pieces together. And this allows it to uh, articulate. Pulls out and goes in, pulls out and goes in. And that's for, of course, driveline sweep. Six bolts. Allen drive and two hex drive. We'll check the instructions. Uh, we'll see what they recommend. This is the hardware that was included in this particular drive shaft. Uh, you may get hard hardware with your drive shaft. Again, this is for a 2014 Mustang GT with a five liter Coyote. You know, whatever Mustang chassis, whatever drive shaft or however it's designed and the intended use for that application, uh, you may reuse hardware uh, that may give you hardware or you could probably purchase new hardware from our site. First, I need to get it lifted up so we can spin the drive shaft, got it in neutral. So we have the car on the four post lift. Uh, of course you can do this off jacks, jack stands, whatever, two post lift. Four post lift, if we didn't have it up in the air, we kind of have to lug it back and then lug it forward. As, that way we can rotate the drive shaft so we can get all of our bolts but we have these cool little adapters on our four post lift between the drive on ramps or the rails. We can lift the car up and that'll make it a heck of a lot easier to turn and get access to all of our bolts. Because see now, we can spin this freely with ease. And if you're strong enough like me, you can just turn that drive shaft by hand. And I'm not very strong, so y'all are probably be a-okay. We'll pull these sleeves forward, uh, manipulate our over axle pipes, get this dude out of here. Across the clamp. It's gonna be a 10 mil, probably on a pneumatic. It's all right, we got a Scott Hubbard, so he uh, predetermines our tools before we even have to think about it. Watch how strong I am. Leave that right there, we'll pull the front. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is the Hubbard Special, man. This is the get business done impact right here. Yeah. Got an invisible socket. Oh, we got a Ford Racing shifter in this thing. I didn't know that. I thought it felt a little notchy. I may need to tap tap too. There you go. No, it's, it's, it's coming. Yo, oh, nice. What do you what do you guesstimate there, Hubbard? How much how much that thing weigh? All right, let's do the uh, do the crate myrtle test, whatever that is. Yeah, that's uh pretty heavy. Oh wow, yeah. yeah, this goes probably 15, 12 to fifteen pounds lighter. But we'll get we'll grab a scale and get these dudes weighed. All right, people, uh, we got the two piece drive shaft out. Now we're gonna go ahead and weigh them on our uh, scale we've got here. Factory two piece drive shaft uh, in this particular car here. Uh, again, like I said, uh, depending on the application, the weights, all this stuff, you know, it slightly vary. But this one here in a 2014 GT, 37.47 pounds uh, approximately. Of course, if you weigh yours, depending on your scale, all that, you may see just a little difference uh, in weight. For the one piece aluminum shaft from Ford Performance, dang, check that out, 20.62 pounds. Uh, so rough calculation. Calculation, not quite 17. Go ahead and round that up to 17 pounds of rotational mass reduced. It's gonna reduce parasitic loss, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but like I said, we'll see if the 17 pounds can translate, see if our chassis dyno can, can see the horsepower. We'll get this one on and then uh, we'll strap the car down and then y'all know the drill from there. All right, I almost forgot. Uh, this is a trick that Scott Hubbard taught me on all these uh, raw metal parts, whether they're new or even if you get a new vehicle for that matter, just take you some satin, matte, gloss, clear coat, whatever, and, and paint these flanges. That way, over time, uh, you know, that clear coat act as a, as a good barrier and you won't get uh, surface rust or corrosion. So pretty good tip there from uh, Scott Hubbard. And uh, we cleaned ours with just some prep spray off camera. You obviously want to do that first. That way you get off any machine oils uh, and crud like that. That way your clear coat, you know, obviously uh, has a better chance of sticking. And remember, you're painting flanges. You're not painting the body of a car, so you don't have to be perfect on this. All right, so now we're going to take our anti-seize and we're going to put it kind of in your main main contact area. You don't have to get stupid crazy with that way. If you ever have to pull it off or 
you know, you sell the car or whatever, maybe the next guy has to pull it off. It may make life just a little bit easier for him. And the reason for the anti-seize just kind of acts as a good barrier between the between the metals, uh, prevents a little bit of corrosion and helps with disassembly and uh, in the world of man. Oh, that's the first, so just make sure you got a good brush. Uh, luckily, luckily we're done. Hubbard! No, you're gonna need a new brush. It broke. You got any towels? Cause I'm about to turn into the tin man. Depending on the application, you just want to make sure your flanges are clean. It's been in Texas its whole life. Lucky us. Uh, we don't have to deal with none of that rusty, crusty crap much. You just want to make sure all your flanges are clean. You just get a good mating surface, all that good stuff. So we'll wipe any of the loose debris off the front flange and the rear flange. All right, then we'll flip you around to the rear flange here as well. Again, same rules apply. Your application could be just a touch different than this one, but uh, just make sure it's nice and clean. If you have to get a little uh, green scotch bright wire brush, whatever means necessary, get it all cleaned out good. And then just, uh, you also wanna make sure, you know, your thread holes are clean as well. All right, so flanges are clear coated. Uh, we've got anti-seize where we need it. Uh, now we'll kind of work it uh, back into the car, get it reinstalled. Uh, we'll throw some Loctite on our front flange bolts, get all that installed, retorque, get the exhaust back on. And I've said this 5,000 times, so y'all can cut it out. It's time. All right, people, uh, we got our results pulled up for the uh, aluminum drive shaft. Now uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, again, we were just kind of curious. Can reduced rotational mass from an aluminum drive shaft translate to a chassis dyno? I know when you take this on the street and you kind of start from a dead stop, let it roll out. Uh, at the seat of your pants, you can kind of feel uh, the rotational mass uh, decrease, you know, kind of through through the drive line. So previously, Trace car, 391 horsepower, 0.2, if we want to get uh, to the decimal points, 378.6 pound-feet of torque. Uh, we did dyno that on a different, little bit different day. Conditions were slightly different. Uh, that wheel plate, just a small factor, uh, but nonetheless, uh, at that point, we're splitting hairs because, you know, we're still using the SAE correction factor. So with the aluminum drive shaft, Trace car is now making 394.8 horsepower, 381.4 pound-feet of torque. So so there was a slight increase in horsepower and torque that did translate through the chassis dyno. Taking a little bit closer look at the graph, I thought it was pretty cool to see the curve gains with the aluminum drive shaft past 5,000 RPM. Pretty cool to see. Y'all let us know down in the comments uh, what y'all think of the test. Obviously, it's with the tools we have available to us. You know, we can't get it down to the 100% scientific. You know, is it adding more horsepower or wrong word, is it freeing up more horsepower? That's what you kind of want to use because of the reduced rotational mass. So quick takeaways, aluminum drive shaft, no matter what, is always a little bit better for performance, again, because you're you're reducing that rotational mass, a little bit quicker acceleration, you know, the whole nine yards. So individual results will vary. We did this on a 2014 GT with the Coyote V8 engine. Uh, so if you have a Fox body, SN95, new edge, first generation S197, S550, Lightning, whatever the case may be, depending on your weight differences, et cetera, your results will vary. If y'all like this one, uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, turn on those notifications. And until uh, we catch you next one, y'all know what to do for all things 79 to present Mustang and SVT Lightning. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.